All right, good evening and welcome to the October Lake Mills Area School District meeting. I'm Rick Mason, president of the board, and our mission statement is preparing all of today's students for tomorrow's opportunities. Uh, verification of meeting notice. The agenda was submitted to the Lake Mills Leader on October 4th and posted at the Lake Mills Library, Lake Mills Post Office, and the Bank of Lake Mills at that same time. It's also on the district website. Thank you. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, and I'm going to have everybody stand and do the pledge, which is behind me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> I'm going to call the meeting to order and roll call, please. Don Delaney. Here. Rachel Davies. Here. Robert D'Imperio. Here. David Rodell. Here. Richard Mason. Here. And Maggie Palzine. Here. Okay, do we have any agenda revisions? Um, I wanted to say that you could delete Dr. Delaney's board report today. We have another. Uh, student rep, as you know, and we thought we were going to swear him in this evening, but he was unable to attend. Okay, so we won't have the swearing in tonight. Um, could we have approval? A motion to approve? I move approval of the agenda as printed. Second. With the modifications as noted by Ms. Strike. Second. Second by Dr. Delaney. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. That is passed. Okay, at this time, I'm going to move to the front here. And I'll have you guys move to the front, too. Ooh. Okay, it's my pleasure tonight, and I always look forward to this, is recognizing years of service, above and beyond 25 years of service. So the first one that I'd like to call up is Lorelei Krieger. Lorelei, come on down. Right here, right, right by me, right oh, by me. I have something to read about you, Lorelei. Lorelei came to us after marrying her husband, Dan, in 1994, she job shared at the high school with Peg Shukneck and was a substitute the other days in the district. Then she took a full-time position in special education in the middle school. Lorelei also was a student council advisor and very involved with character ed program. She did announcements every day as Mrs. K with words of wisdom. Every day she reminded students the choices you make today shape your world tomorrow. After 10 years of the middle school, Lorelei moved to fifth grade at Prospect. When the fifth grade moved to the middle school, she began her role as a web coordinator with Tracy Vogt. After 10 years teaching fifth grade, Lorelei is finishing a career teaching sixth grade social studies. Lorelei considers it a privilege to teach students and help them to be the person they are meant to be. So we have this really neat memento for you. Can I open you, you may open it. <laughs> Isn't that neat? Here, 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 here. here. Lake Mills Area School District honors Lorelei Krieger for 25 years of dedicated service, presented on October 14, 2019. The next recipient is uh, Kathy Woleen, after um, 30 years of service. 30 years. 
Isn't it seem me? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, that wasn't very long ago, right? <laughs> All right. Here's a brief testimony about Kathy. I started working at Prospect Elementary School in 1989 for one half days, for a half day. After that year, I was transferred to the high school and started working full time with Dale Winger, who was in charge of sending out the Lake Mills Constituent, a school community newspaper. In 1993, Mr. Leadholm, the guidance counselor, needed help in the guidance office and Mr. Forrest, the principal athletic director at that time, needed help with athletics. That is where I have stayed, guidance and athletic secretary at the high school. I have enjoyed helping the students, teachers, and parents for the last 30 years and being a part of all the building and technology update. It has been exciting and there has never been a dull moment. <laughs> so we have two things for you. <clears throat> this really neat plaque and then clock. Yes, sir. thank you. So, congratulations. <clears throat> thank you. Now you got to go to the <laughs> Congratulations to both Lorelai and, and Kathy, and you people that you, you're free to leave, unless you want to stay, <laughs> unless you want to stay and see an exciting uh, board meeting. All right, we have a new policy, first reading of the new policy on affiliated um, teams. And I hope you can, hope you had a chance to read that. Um, I'm still trying to find it. Here it is. Let me read it quickly just to kind of uh, re refresh your memory. It's policy 7510.01. Affiliate Recreation Program. The Lake Mills Area School District Board of Education may designate an organization as an affiliate recreation department partner and enter into a memorandum of understanding with the said organization that may supersede policy 7510, use of school facilities and grounds and administrative guidelines. 7510A, use of district facilities and grounds. 7510B, fees for the use of school facilities. And 7510C, supervision of rented facilities. So consider this the first reading of this policy. All right. Now, who's next, Donna? Uh, Skip Maggie. Oh. Megan. Yes. Megan, our school, um, our high school representative. Megan, take it away. Okay, so it has been a very busy month at Lake Mills High School. Fall sports have been doing extremely well. The girls' tennis team was named conference champs, and they have three events going to the state meet later this week. Soccer has a 10 to 7 record and volleyball has a 25 to 5 record and both of those teams only have a few games left before they start regional play. The football team has had an outstanding season so far. They are undefe undefeated in conference and they secured the conference champion title with a, a win against Lodi this past Friday for the last game at Campus Field. Um, the students are very excited to see how the rest of the season turns out for these ath amazing athletic teams that we have this year. We had our homecoming celebration two weeks ago and I think it is safe to say that everyone enjoyed the week and to make it even better, a blowout win against Lakeside on Friday night. Mm -hmm. 
Um, this year, our school had more spirit and involvement in all the activities than past years. Along with um, all the homecoming activities, student council and the whole student body collected and donated almost 200 boxes of cereal for the Lake Mills Food Pantry. It was very cool to see all the students coming together to help out our community in such a unique way. The high school's production of Year in Town is working very hard as they prepare for their performances on November 8th, 9th, and 10th. And lastly, our school store, The Paw, had its grand opening today, and the students were very excited to see its brand new location. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. D'Imperio. Uh, there's been quite a bit of activity at the, uh, for the referendum projects at the high school. Uh, the building addition, uh, exterior work, uh, brickwork is almost completed. The roof is complete. Uh, interiors, uh, the metal studs are being installed. Most of those are in place. Rough electrical, mechanical, and plumbing is going on. Uh, the goal is to have that addition completed for the second semester of this year, and it looks like that's a possibility. Uh, <clears throat> the remodeling down in the uh, culinary arts and fitness center uh, is moving along with interior partitions, drywalling, uh, electrical and mechanical work there, and those two will be completed for the second semester. Um, the athletic complex um, is nearing completion. Uh, bleachers are installed. The uh, track surface is now completed. Uh, fencing is uh, in progress. The concession stand uh, modifications have been completed. Uh, and again, the hope is by the end of the month that that facility will be completed as well. Good. Thank you. Uh, administrative reports. Uh, Mrs. Thompson, elementary principal. Oh, can, we, can we back up to community input? Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Megan's not here. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Ahead. Thompson. Good evening. A couple of um, highlights from the elementary school. The past month, our students and staff have been involved in some community, community service projects. We wore orange and brought in food for to fight hunger this month. We also all wore blue to stomp out bullying as an anti-prevention uh, measure and wore caps for a cure for childhood cancer awareness. Our teachers participated in an in-service this month. We were focused on technology updates to help our teachers with some of the new programs and software that we are utilizing and just giving some work time for some of the things we've already been using, such as iReady, our teacher dashboard, words their way. And our third grade teachers all have new smart boards, so they had a training and overview on utilizing the new smart boards in their classroom. Um, I'm also working with the Greater Watertown Health Foundation in a program called Every Child Thrives. So two of the big things that we're working on is the ages and stages questionnaire, which we give to all of our incoming four-year-old kindergarten students. Um, so we're going to be working on ways to better utilize that information to prepare our programming for four-year-old kindergarten, five-year-old kindergarten, and then track that data over time. So that's a, a great project that we're in the midst of right now, as well as read, talk, play. You may have seen some of those um, yard signs around town, and that is a parent um, education program to help raise awareness and resources for parents um, for children from birth all the way up to five years old. Um, our school goals, I gave you some information on those. We're focused on three different areas. PBIS, which is Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports. We're focused on our playground with the help and support of PlayWorks to make sure that we have students that are promoting safe and healthy play on the playground. Our second goal is around reading achievement, continuing to close that gap and raise the reading achievement of all of our students. We are continuing to focus on phonics. Kindergarten and first grade last year implemented a new phonics curriculum. This year's second grade is in the implementation phase. And we've already seen really great results of closing some big achievement gaps for our students with that new phonics program. And then finally, our math achievement. Um, we're in the second year of implementation for ready math. Support, so we are supporting our teachers on implementing that new program, looking at our data, and finding any areas that we need to boost up and improve upon. 
Um, and then finally, just at the district level, our assessments are in full swing. So our kindergarten through eighth grade students have been busy with the iReady assessment. Um, and PALS assessment was given for 4K and kindergarten and first grade students. Um, parents have been getting the results of last year's Ford exam for um, third grade through eighth grade students last year. And then ninth and tenth grade um, students and parents <coughs> are getting the results of the Aspire assessment at this time. <coughs> Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Mrs. Bauer, middle school principal. Good evening. I am going to begin tonight um, by reviewing um, just a summary of the goals. You have my full detailed goals and strategic direction outlined in the goals document that should be in board docs. But just as a summary, um, in terms of working with students and programs, we, are, we too are working with PlayWorks. Uh, we are working very hard on that fifth grade transition. Um, we have implemented um, iReady as a supplement to some of our English language arts work. So we are carefully tracking that data and the impact of that program, as well as um, uh, implementation of an RTI program with ELA as well. Um, we are also working with guidance, um, our counseling program, to embed some of those uh, lessons within the curriculum as opposed to having uh, standalone pieces for that. Um, in terms of working with staff, uh, we will be doing um, social emotional learning training um, this spring and um, we, are, we have a, a couple of committees working on um, school culture, social emotional learning, and kind of the next directions for our middle school. Um, and um, I, um, with, uh, with um, Nate on board now, Mr. Grundel on board, um, we are working towards a goal of making sure we are meeting regularly with all staff um, and getting their input on everything going on in the building. A um, couple of fun things going on at the middle school. Um, we have our upcoming community service activity coming up on October 23rd. Um, that's where our students go out in the community and do their large service learning project. Um, this will be followed by Spiketober and activity times for our students. So um, we are embedding dances within the school day now so that all students can participate. Also our Spiketober is our volleyball game against our students. We will be having it at seventh and eighth grade group and a fifth and sixth grade group to kind of break up the students this year and then alternating with that they will be doing a little bit of a dance and some outdoor activities and different things. Um, we are also um, starting a Sensi fundraiser that will hopefully result in the purchase of a book vending machine. Um, students will get tokens and um, from their teachers and they will be able to go uh, get a free book from the book vending machine to take home with them. So we are in the middle of that fundraiser right now. Any questions for me? Questions? Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Nate Grundle, who is the new assistant middle school principal and summer school director. Yeah, thanks. Uh, having a great time right now as an assistant principal under Jen and learning a lot about the middle school and the middle school students. Uh, it's been a great time so far in the first month. I was talking to Steve, it seems like it was longer um, than it really has been. <laughs> uh, so uh, as a director of summer school, uh, I want to propose or put out the dates for summer school for the 2020 school year. I will be from June 15th to the 30th of June and July 6th through July 21st. Um, we're looking forward to get planning on summer school and get moving on that um, for the, the upcoming year. Any questions? questions? Thank you, Nate. Right, thank you. Mr. Stephen Considine, who's the new assistant principal of the high school and the athletic director. So as Maggie said, we've had a pretty exciting month at the high school, especially uh, last Friday night with the closing of Campus Field um, and hopefully opening the new facilities on the athletic side. Uh, Mr. Vogel, okay, I couldn't be here tonight, but he did want me to go over the goals that we have for our building, um, which you have in front of you. The seven goals that we're kind of focusing on this year, the first one has to do with consistent grading practices. We really want to focus with our teachers on effective feedback with students and uh, basically that common assessment across the board and making sure that we're, we're meeting our um, learning targets. Uh, the second goal is to uh, improve our spring ACT scores by nine percentage points, especially in the area of uh, career and college readiness. Our third goal um, 
is to have a better collaborative relationship with the community, uh, whether that be with social media or being out in the public trying to get feedback of what they feel is necessary, that sort of thing. Uh, the fourth goal that we have is our ACP, which is our academic and career plan components. Uh, right now we do have an ACP committee that meets monthly. We are also spending two days a week during advisory uh, where they're home base, where they're focusing on that ACP, especially the sophomore classes. Our fifth goal is um, to improve the achievement for our ELL learners. We've already done some professional development, having some speakers in to kind of work with the staff and implement new ideas and strategy. Um, our sixth goal is kind of more in my ballpark. That's we want to reduce the amount of tardies and improve our attendance. And one of the things that we're doing is I'm having weekly meetings on Friday after we run uh, attendance checks with students who are behind or maybe be slipping in the attendance area. And then the seventh thing that we're doing is something that we call the Student Leadership and Athletic Advisory Council that I'm in charge of. Uh, we have 24 students that are in all the athletic programs, uh, juniors and seniors, and we've identified them as leaders. And we're going to go out in the community and kind of set a positive role model. Uh, starting with, we're going to read to elementary students. We're hoping to have lunch at the middle school, uh, work with senior centers, and do things like that. Questions? Okay, thank you. Mrs. Brown, Director of Special Education. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to talk to you first about some of the goals for um, my departments and then a couple updates. So this year we're going to be, um, we've dabbled into the social emotional learning competencies um, for special education that have been put out from DPI, but we're really going to be focusing in on that as we're writing goals around any kind of social or emotional needs that way. Um, a little more targeted things, we're looking at early intervention strategies for the, our youngest learners. Um, we're going to be looking at some different type of math interventions for kind of early on through about middle school age and then some transition options post high school not just for our students who are going to be able to um, come into our transition program but also for our students um, who might be pursuing some other avenues for um, high school or post high school so college or four years degrees and things like that and giving family the resources that way um, around pupil services um, with our EL program we're going to be focusing in on um, the speaking component of the access testing, um, looking at our scores that way, and um, changing up a few ways that we're going to be administering that test this year to see if that helps with the scores. And then also for best practices around middle school and high school supports, um, we're looking at that for the, this year. And then um, reviewing I-504 and talent development procedures and handbooks. And then I'm also going to be working side by side with Pam as we're writing those job descriptions for our pupil services staff. So the goals for the year. Um, a couple updates. Um, you may have heard about this or not, but on September 16th, we had a Latino family night. It was very successful. Um, so I really want to acknowledge Tara Williams, Pam Moan, Kisten Gillespie, Colby Strauss, Elena Gethy, Genthy, sorry, Casey Busca, and Casey's student teacher, who I'm forgot her name so I apologize but um, they worked very very hard in um, providing a night full of information for our um, families with community and school resources we had authentic Mexican food and some Latino dance lessons as well and I would say approximately 85 to 90 people attended so it was very well attended wow. it was quite a successful event um, and then tomorrow Gerilyn Rohr actually and um, I'll be heading up with her, but she'll be presenting at our statewide transition conference at the Dells tomorrow. So, Good. Questions? Anybody? Thank you. Thanks. This is Brockert, Director of Business Services. Um, at this time of year, our office is um, involved in updating the budget from what was presented at the annual meeting. Um, we do know now our summer school enrollments, which was 85 students, up from 76 the year before. We also know our third Friday count, which is 1,526, which also is up from 1,512 the year before. So we know these parts of our revenue limit calculation. We're still waiting on our equalized aid 
are um, the private school voucher information, computer aid, and the personal property aid items. But we are further along in, in estimating our revenue limit. Um, this increase in enrollment is about is fifty thousand dollars more than what was presented at the annual meeting. So we are working on the budget adjustments, which will be presented at the October twenty eighth meeting. Good. Questions, Wendy? Thank you, Mrs. Strike. This has been mentioned already this evening, but I really wanted to thank everyone that was involved in the closing of Campus Field, the event that was Friday night in the very very cold windy evening. Uh, first of all, I'd like to um, thank the FFA alumni for the tailgate party that they um, coordinated. It was a lot of work. Should we be inside? Should we be outside? Should we get tents? Not tents? Oh, it was, it was crazy. But um, I think that there were probably over 200 people that participated in that, so that was great. Um, also, I want to thank the American Legion for helping with the closing flag ceremony. Those guys stayed until the bitter, literally bitter end, um, to help us take down that flag in the wind and present that. Um, to Kale Vogel, that will be um, incorporated into the new facility. The show choir came, and I think they were all there to sing the national anthem, so that was great. Um, the pep band and Mr. Gisha stayed through the whole entire game. Typically, they leave it half after the halftime show, but they stayed and uh, played a little bit in the fourth quarter and then um, provided music during the closing ceremony, so that was great. I also want to thank Myron Construction for providing the confetti cannons. The wind kind of made that a really short <laughs> thing, but there's a lot of confetti on the ground. And then I just wanted to thank the whole community for coming out and participating and for the people who um, submitted um, items to the leaders so they could do an, a nice coverage of the event. And, um, and then even some of the alumni joined in on the final walk, so that was great. I also wanted to, um, a little bit late, acknowledge the school board. Last week was Wisconsin School Board Week, and so I wanted to thank everyone on the board for their thoughtful consideration of all the, the issues that we work on and for their sincere dedication to the student staff, community, and families. Um, this um, really is an amazing school board, and for those of us who have been in other places and done other things, know that this is... Uh, a really great uh, board to work with, and they are sincerely, sincerely dedicated to what's best for kids. So I want to thank you for that. Thank you. Is that it? Yes. What's the next item? Community input. Do <laughs> <laughs> you have any community input? Um, someone from the LEA, uh, LMEA, I believe, is here. LMEA. All right. Good evening. I'm Brenda Morris, high school English teacher and Lake Mills Education Association secretary. Um, good evening to Dr. Mason, Mr. D'Imperio, Dr. Delaney, Ms. Ruglitz Davies, and Mr. Radel. We would like to thank you again for meeting with our representatives on September 23rd. We value keeping the lines of communication open, especially in the discussion of funding a cost of living base wage increase. We acknowledge that it was a difficult conversation and it wasn't always comfortable, but it was necessary. We reiterate our concern, particular concern, for our newer colleagues who work a second job to make ends meet, and for our longer serving colleagues whose salaries have been effectively frozen. Your frustration with the inadequacy of state funding is one that we echo. Efforts to con contact our legislators to support increases in public school funding will continue. We encourage you and the families of Lake Mills to do the same. In the meantime, please know that our, as you are looking at ways to help your employees meet the rising cost of living, we will always welcome hearing from you should you have new ideas. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Consent agenda. Um, I want to read the items under the consent agenda that we're going to um, approve. The approval of September 9th regular Board of Education meeting minutes. Approval of September 9th, Finance Committee Proceedings. Approval of September 23rd, Finance Committee Proceedings. Approval of vouchers and invoices. Approval of Treasury Report. Approval of Support Staff Resignations. Approval of Co-Curricular Staff Resignations. Approval of Support Staff Letters of Assignment. Approval of Co-Curricular letters of assignment, and approval of the consent agenda, unless someone wants to pull something out. 
I'm just wondering if we should pull out the approval of the September 23rd Finance Committee meeting for a separate vote. I know that Dr. Delaney and I were unable to attend, so we would need to abstain from that okay. Okay. item. Okay. Want to pull that out as a separate item? Is okay. So you let's can do approve. That, but it's not necessary. Yeah. Okay. It is not necessary. It is not necessary because they are proceedings and they're not minutes. Okay. Okay. Just making sure. So Thank you. I'll take an approval of the consent agenda. Motion. I move approval of the consent agenda as printed. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded <laughs> to approve the consent agenda. And we'll need a roll call vote on that, please. Delaney. Aye. Davies. Aye. D'Imperio. Aye. Rodell. Aye. Mason. Aye. And it passes unanimously. Action items, approval of short-term borrowing for the 1920 school year. Any comment on that? This is something we've been doing for the last five or more years, and we're just looking for an annual renewal of it. Okay, I'll take a motion, please. I'm, I move the board approve the following resolution. Uh, be it resolved by the Lake Mills Area School District Board of Education that pursuant to the provision of section 67.12 parent 8, parent A, parent 1, and parent 8A Wisconsin statutes, the Lake Mills Area School District Board of Education shall, shall authorize a short-term line of credit not to exceed $1 million with the Bank of Lake Mills pursuant to the above law as per the provisions set up in the complete resolution document. The entire resolution will be a part of the minutes of this meeting. Second. Moving to second and approve the um, short term borrowing resolution. Roll call, please. Davies? Aye. D'Imperio? Aye. Radel? Aye. Mason? Aye. Delaney? Aye. And that passes unanimously. Uh, approval of superintendent search firm for the 2021 school year. Um, just a couple comments on that before we, um, before I take a motion. Um, in um, discussing the search committee, we reviewed uh, two written proposals, and we considered two other additional proposals, and it was a consensus of the board to go with the Wisconsin School Consulting Firm. And that is the resolution, and I will take a motion, unless anybody has any questions about that. I'll I'll take a motion. The, I move the board approve the contract to Wisconsin School Consulting, LLC, as a superintendent search firm for the new superintendent for the 2020-21 school year. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the search firm, Wisconsin School Consulting, LLC, for the superintendent search. Any questions or comments or anything? Okay, roll call on that, please. D'Imperio? Aye. Radel? Aye. Delaney? Aye. Davies? Aye. Mason? Aye, and that passes unanimously. Approval of the 1920 Employee Handbook. Edit. There's just one edit, and that is the organizational chart, and we updated that to reflect um, the two gentlemen that we've added and um, how the administrative team has been reorganized as a, as a result of that. I move the board approve the district organizational chart as presented. Second. Moved and second to approve the organizational chart. Any questions or comments on that? Roll call, please. Radel. Aye. Delaney. Aye. Davies. Aye. D'Imperio. Aye. Mason. Aye. And that passes unanimously. Approval of summer school dates. These are the dates that uh, Mr. Grundle had shared with you for session one. And session two, and uh, just a note that the swimming lessons are in the afternoon into the evening of the second session. I move the board approve the following 2020 summer school dates, session one from June 15th to June 30th, and session two from July 6th to July 21st, including swimming PM lessons. Second. Moved and second and approve the summer school dates. Questions on those? Seeing none, roll call please. Delaney. Aye. Davies. Aye. D'Imperio. Aye. Rado. Aye. Mason. Aye. And that passes unanimously. Approval of Start College Now requests. 
Um, as we're learning the new terminology, these are the requests for what used to be called youth options, specifically targeted at technical schools. Um, there are two students listed there, and remember that they request approval of more courses than they'll actually take, just because it's very difficult to get into the courses um, and, and arrange a schedule. I, I move, move the board approve the Start College and all requests as presented for the second semester. Second. Second, Ms. Ferrado, <coughs> approving of the Start College requests. Um, questions on that by anyone? Okay, roll we'll call on that, please. Davies? Aye. D'Imperio? Aye. Radel? Aye. Delaney? Aye. Mason? Aye. And that passes unanimously. Approval of overnight field trip in March 2020. So, we're, so we are talking about softball this time, and this is the trip to Florida. Um, you can see that there's been a change in itinerary since the last time that they went. Um, it's not staying right at, um, at the Disney complex, um, and this is going to bring the cost down a little bit for students. I move the board approve the overnight softball field trip in March 2020. It is understood that the board will incur no cost and will accept no liability for any funds lost for any reason. Second. Second, Dr. Delaney, um, on the approval of overnight field trip. Questions? Roll call. D'Imperio. Aye. Delaney. Aye. Davies. Aye. Radel. Aye. Mason. Aye, and that passes unanimously. Uh, approval of gifts. Lots another, of them. Another list. Another mm -hmm. huge list, Mr. All Ray. right, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Love this. I do. I move the board accept the following gifts and thank the generous donors for their continued support of the students and programs of the Lake Mills Area School District. $100 donation from the Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories to Lake Mills High School and Terry and Pam Strikes donation of $400 to the Lake Mills High School's Junior Optimist Club. The following donations to the High School Drama Club, $100 donated by Allison Schmeiser, $100 donated by Wendy and Steve Brockert, $100 donation from the family of Roger Buckholtz, $100 donation from Steve Fossil, $100 donation from the Friends of the LD Fargo Library, $150 donation from the American Legion Auxiliary Unit 67, $150 donation from CAPE, $200 donation from Fiberdome, $225 donation from Loose Homes, $300 donation from Pam and Terry Strike, and a $300 donation from Carrie G. Denson and Mary Ann Jackson. Very generous. Second. Second. Second, Mr. D'Imperio. Another huge list of gifts. Thank you to everyone. Any comments on that? Roll call then. Radel? Aye. Delaney? Aye. Davies? Aye. D'Imperio? Aye. Mason? Aye, and that passes unanimously. Um, future board agenda items? We just wanted to remind you of the special board meeting on October 28th, and that's beginning at 6 o'clock um, here in these chambers. And that is to um, go over the budget and set the levy. And then our regular meeting will be in November, on November 11th. All right. Now, we're going to have a presentation, and I invite everybody to remain. Let me introduce um, Dr. Shaw back there in the corner. And Dr. Turner, Jim Shaw, Miles Turner. And um, they represent the search firm for the new superintendent. And they're going to give you a, a, an overview. Do we need a few minutes to set up? It will be helpful. Okay, let's take a short break and we'll get you guys set up. All right, this is Dr. Shaw, Jim Shaw. And some of you probably recognize him. He's been fairly close. Lake Mills for a number of years. Sure, over 30. I've lived in Lake Mills over 30 Isn't years. It, really? My two sons attended school here up until middle school. And I've been pretty involved in the community. I was president of the Rotary and um, I was very involved with CAPE, um, Citizen Advocates for Public Education. And uh, I would say that Dean Sanders and and Pam were friends, superintendents, you know, get to know each other. And so I, I know um, Lake Mills, and I, this is my home. I mean, when you live over 30 years 
in a place um, it grows on you, and hopefully I, I have contributed something back to the community. And that's why, what a wonderful chance um, to help, again, to give something back <coughs> to the Lake Mills community in what I think is the most important task that the Lake Mills School Board uh, undergoes, <coughs> that is finding a new superintendent. I totally agree with what Pam said earlier. Um, this school board, and I say this as a citizen who lived here and who voted and who watched what was happening, um, is just a very competent, professional school board. And believe it or not, that doesn't happen everywhere. Um, so to have a school board like this, I think is a real asset, not only to the community, but it will be an asset in our, in our uh, search for a superintendent. Because as Pam can tell you, if there's one thing that matters to a superintendent, it is the relationship with the school board. And if there isn't that solid relationship, then it impacts the whole district. So what I did tonight was uh, kind of put together a packet of information for you, which is a summary of where we are right now in the process. First of all, is the you'll find in the packet is the proposal that was presented uh, to you in uh, uh, August 19th. We came forward with that uh, proposal. And um, there's a contract that tonight you approved a resolution to approve um, the contract. And then um, tonight we'd like to get into the, you know, beyond the proposal and the contract to get in the nitty gritty of what's going to happen in the search process. How do you replace somebody like, like Pam Strike? Now, it's very difficult to find um, good superintendents, um, but it makes it much easier when you have a district that is functioning the way Lake Mills is right now, and when you have a school board and you have a supportive community, and you have the assets, you know, the highest achievement, et cetera, in Jefferson County, uh, approval of referendums, beautiful facilities, those are assets that we can use to, to recruit and to sell the district to the next leader. So what we'd like to do at the onset is kind of set the tone for how this is, is going to work. And that's what this planning meeting is intended to do. This is your decision. You make the final decision. We assist you. We advise you during the process. But we in no way want to um, take away any authority or we we want to be flexible in how we move forward um, besides living here I should tell you a little bit about myself um, I was superintendent of schools in Menominee Falls Wisconsin a very high achieving suburban district um, just west of Milwaukee I was also a superintendent in the Racine Unified district a much larger district when I was there, 26,000 kids, and um, many of the children, poverty and struggling. I was at the University of Wisconsin, where I taught superintendents. Wisconsin, got to know Rick a little better when I worked there, and it uh, was one of the people that started the Wisconsin IDEA Executive PhD program to prepare superintendents. And it was my job to teach both principals and superintendents. So. Over the years, working in many districts, being president of, of WASDA, the Wisconsin Association, I was in a wonderful position to meet many good superintendents, many good school boards, and work across the state. That's my background. Miles, I'm gonna ask Miles to step up and tell you about Miles. Thank you, Jim. Um, I think it's very important that you know who you're hiring and, and know about our background, because the background tells you what our qualifications are, what, where we come from, what we've done, so that when, you, uh, when we're screening candidates and recruiting candidates and trying to get you the very best superintendent possible, um, it has to come from a basis of knowledge on your consultant's part, you know, what our backgrounds are. Very, very briefly, I began as a classroom teacher. Uh, from that, I went to a principal. Uh, I was a principal out in Colorado. Um, I went and got my doctorate and uh, became a, a principal down in Puerto Rico on a military base. 
uh, for, uh, down in Roosevelt Roads, Puerto Rico. Um, from there, I came back to Wisconsin, uh, to, to my roots. Uh, I attended Lawrence University and uh, went to school in Lake Geneva. Came back to my roots and uh, took over the superintendency of Spring Green, uh, the River Valley School District. I was superintendent there for seven years. Then after that seven years, I became the director of WASDA, the executive director of WASDA, which is the Wisconsin Association of School District Administrators, which is the parallel organization to the school boards association. In fact, I work with uh, uh, John Ashley, the director, and uh, spent a lot of time. I was in WASDA for 24 years, uh, directing the superintendent's association. In that time, germane to this search, and to my background being germane to the search, um, I ran all of the superintendent training academies for, through, through our organization, worked with the new superintendent's academy. So many of the people out in the field I know and have known for years um, because, because of my work with WASDA out of Madison. Uh, I currently live in Wana Key. Uh, I retired seven years ago. You may know John Bales, who was my replacement in WASDA. Uh, when I retired, um, I was recruited to work for a firm, a search firm. I started doing several searches. I did a lot of them up north. I have a cabin up there, and I did Wabino and Crandon and Ocado Falls and Sturgeon Bay and uh, Random Lake, which is much more over near Sheboygan. But I did those, and then Jim and I uh, teamed up and did the Janesville search, and we did the, uh, the Appleton search, and we did the Wausau search. So those, we have the, the small school and large school background. We have the network throughout the state. We know people, he knows university people and has trained superintendents and I've worked with superintendents for years. That background gives you not only the foundation I have in, in education and the knowledge of education at all levels, but also the network. And one of the important things we're gonna do for you is, is use those networks and those connections to, to vet people and to really recruit people for this position. This is an excellent job. You should be very proud of your school district. You have a great reputation. You have a great location. Uh, uh, you have a, a, a good reputation as a school board and administrative stability over the years. That makes it easier to sell the district and recruit people to come here and get the very best candidates. You know, sometimes there's a lot of turmoil and turnover in a community and conflict between board and administrators. When that happens, it's very hard to go out in the field where it's, it's scarce. The, the, the field of superintendents is a very scarce field right now. And to get the best people, you need this kind of a community, this kind of a school board, uh, the quality that we can then sell and get you the best candidates. So that's a little bit about my background and what I bring to this search. Um, Jim is going to be the lead of this search. He's the lead consultant on it. Uh, and we're partners for the Wisconsin um, School Consultants Associate or uh, LLC. Thank you very much. I probably have some other comments about specific process. So we'd like to um, just tell you that <coughs> we did searches with other um, firms. And we started this uh, Wisconsin School Consulting uh, for three reasons. First of all, we wanted uh, um, some flexibility, more flexibility in the process, so we can design a process that is more specific to the community that we're working with. So that's why we're having this planning meeting, so we can begin a conversation about what do you want to include in that process, what don't you want to do. We have a suggested process based on meeting um, with Rick, Bob D'Imperio, I've talked with him, um, and my own knowledge of Lake Mills, I have a suggested a process I'd like to put forward today, but we can tweak it. So the first thing we wanted to do is have more flexibility in the search process. The second thing we wanted to do was to focus on Wisconsin. Um, you know, I, I, I taught at the university. All my career is in Wisconsin. Miles is a Wisconsin career. We know Wisconsin. We are comfortable with Wisconsin, and we're committed to public education in Wisconsin. So we we wanted that that um, Wisconsin focus. And then a third reason uh, was that we thought we could do it less, for less expense. We could do it more cheaply than the other search firms because there's no middleman. There's My Miles and I uh, doing the work. So for those three reasons, um, that's why we started this, this company and, and are hoping to go forward with not only with Lake Mills but future searches. And it's our goal um, as you know, some older people who don't really need a job, uh, what can we contribute um, in, in our work 
as school consultants, and we like to focus on this idea of ethical leadership and finding um, leaders who match the values, share the values of the Lake Mills area community. I mean, the professional skills are extremely important. We want a highly qualified person, but we also want a person that is a match for the values that are shared for the, in, in the Lake Mills School District. And that's what we can do when we have the flexibility to, to, to work together independently of the, the firm that we were associated with before. It was a wonderful firm. It was School Exec Connect, but um, this gives us the flexibility to do that. So let me start with the next. Uh, we'd like to take a team approach. Um, Miles and I are a team, and we hope that we'll be able to team with you successfully so we can have some shared responsibility. Again, you have the legal authority. You are the only people that can make a decision about who the next superintendent is. But we would like to advise you on that, and we need not only you, but we're going to need some staff time and some help from Pam and others to, to make this search successful. And so today you approve the agreement, and we're having this meeting. Next. So we would like to open the search tomorrow um, and begin with this list of activities between now and December 2nd. Um, maybe, I should, Miles, you want to talk about opening the search and how you've typically done that in the past and advertising costs? We will. One of the first things we're going to be doing is writing the job posting. Um, we didn't do that presumptuously uh, until we were hired. But we will sit down and write the posting for the job. The first decision that you have to make is in the first paragraph there. Um, we, will, we will want to post the job publicly, obviously. And just to inform you, the Wisconsin School uh, Leadership Center, as it mentions in the, in the third uh, line there, the Leadership Center, that is a combination that was created you know, 15, 20 years ago of the school business uh, officials, the school uh, principals, the school superintendents, the school special ed directors. That's an organization that came together and formed this leadership center, and it has a posting facility it, uh, or a posting uh, website. This is where virtually every administrator in the state of Wisconsin goes to that leadership center if they have any interest in jobs. If they're out going to look for a job, they'll look at the Wisconsin Leadership Center. That's the number one uh, place for the posting. Um, and so we would recommend that you post there. That's, that's going to cost about $500. That's not as part of our fee. Our fee is strictly uh, for our own, uh, to cover our own expenses. That's rolled into the fee that, that you'd be paying. But that would save $500 in that uh, range for the Leadership Center. The next one, AASA, is the American Association of School Administrators. That's a decision you need to make tonight. And so we'll open it up for a little discussion after I explain it. That is the National Association out of Washington, D.C. That's for all superintendents in the nation. That's their national association, where WASDA is their state association. That a posting would cost between $1,000 and $2,000, depending on how much you want to put in it, and whether you want it just online or you want it in their magazine, or you know, and how, how big the ad's going to be, and so forth. We don't really recommend that, necessarily. We have done that for many other searches. Obviously, with Janesville, Wausau, Jan uh, um, um, Appleton, the districts that, that are that large, they wanted to do a national search. If you want a national search and you want to say to your public, we did a national search, then we would put something in, in the AASA. We don't feel that that's necessary at this time. If there's somebody out there nationally who wants to come back to Wisconsin or wants to work in Wisconsin, they'll come in and look at the School Leadership Center. They'll look at your WeCan site. You are a WeCan district. We'll be posting it with WeCan so that they'll look and find it through WeCan. They'll find it through, through uh, the Leadership Center. Um, those are the postings that we recommend. But a lot of boards say, well, we want to be able to say to the community, this is a national search. We honestly don't think that you need to do that. Um, but we are completely open to you if you want to make that decision to, to spend the one or two thousand dollars to post it nationally. People, we, my experience in all the searches that I've done is that people outside that apply for a job in Wisconsin, they don't know the culture. They don't, they don't, you know, they just are looking for jobs anywhere around the United States. You don't get the highest quality candidates, you know, from California that want to move to Wisconsin necessarily or from, you know, from Florida or, or other states. And if, you, if they do, in my experience, they have trouble 
adjusting to the culture and the climate and, and all of that. So I would like you to give us the decision about at, at this time whether you want us to post it nationally or take it w with Wisconsin, understanding that if there's somebody out there who wants to come to Wisconsin, come back to Wisconsin, they started here and they want to come back, they'll be looking at those sites already that we have. Your thoughts on that? Uh, one of the ways that we work with the board, maybe one of the very first things we have to decide is how we're going to move forward. Because the, we don't want the school board to vote on every one of these no. issues. We usually have a, a board liaison that the board agrees this person is going to work with us. And that person would tell us, you know, these, these kind of detailed things, how you, how you want to proceed. Or some districts do a board uh, committee, um, a search committee. Uh, but we like, we think one person from the board, and the five person, it's, again, you're just, that is the important decision. And then these other decisions that we're going to go through here today, we don't have to make those decisions. Today. Not, not the, today. The, the liaison can help us decide how to go forward. So and I would just suggest that that would be, yeah. so if that's how we're going to move forward, that, that typically is how we operate. That's it. Any thoughts on that or questions? What about the national search? What are, you, are, what are your feelings to that, Rachel? Are we approving all of this tonight? Is that Not all of it, but. I mean, is that, is that what we're. But that's one, they need to know that, where to post it. Yeah. So we need, to, we need to come to some kind of consensus on that at least. Oh, on that one, okay. Yeah. That point. Right. I have a question about the posting. Is it just a generic job posting? Because um, it's almost like, community and all the input of it as to what we're actually looking for an applicant right. wouldn't we don't have that information so what is this posting is it just yeah could you describe what that entails the posting basically will have a description of the district in other words we generally pull off of your website or from our knowledge of the district you know what the district is like the size the number of schools um, uh, where how to apply where to apply so that posting it isn't generic just saying job opening superintendent you know Salary will be template. competitive. It's template. a template. Okay. But it is specifically filled out then for the Lake Mills district so that the people will know. And we put in the very positive parts about the district. You know, uh, go ahead. So the, the applicants then, will they, you know, will they be sending in a, a letter, a description? But if they don't really know what specifically we're looking for, how do they respond to whatever specific things that we're looking for in this new administrator? If they don't really know what we're emphasizing, what we're really looking for. Part of the posting says looking for someone with the following qualifications and following, you know, as far as uh, requirements is licensure in Wisconsin, um, experience in, you know, central office or building level experience. Um, you know, those types of things get listed in the posting. I should have mentioned that, yes. I'm just wondering, like, if we do the um, community forums and things and, and certain things come up from that, that the community is actually looking for certain qualifications or... That's, a, that's great because we're jumping ahead just a little bit. Out of all of this, the, the focus groups, the letter of engagement, the community, the community forum, you know, we, we're, out of all of that process, we'll then present to you a profile. This is what the, the new superintendent, this is what your community is looking for and what you're looking for. But that, has, that takes time to create that. So traditionally, you have to do the posting, which is somewhat generic. That's kind of what I'm wondering because so, so we may have a vision Yes. But we're not going to be able to put that into the posting so the applicants kind of know, you know what I mean, that what we're looking well, at. Th th that vision may not be, you might want to tweak that vision. As right. You know, I mean, we haven't formed it yet, right? I mean, we, these conversations haven't had it happen. When we will write a job description and we would ask the, li the liaison to approve it so that we can pr proceed with the, with the posting. But it is of necessity more generic then after all the community involvement, that, I mean, we, we want meetings with staff members, with teachers, with administrators, with community leaders. We need to understand the values again. Right. That, and I think, again, I, you know, I lived here, I had kind of a handle on that, but you gotta listen to people as, as well. And I think mm -hmm. if you want that kind of leader, it's important that we go through this process of engaging the community. Right. We well, could I skip see, through yeah. this and we can do it more quickly. Again, you're you know you're the big gorilla wherever you want to <laughs> wherever you want to sit. But this is this community engagement piece we feel for success in a in a in a good district like Lake Mills 
is very important. Oh, I, you'll, I you'll see on one of the next slides where there's a profile of what we're looking for, what you're looking for. And that will be brought from the community questionnaire that's out there. It will be brought from the forums. The, the, we're going to interview, interview each board member individually. We'll put together a profile, and there's a date where you approve that profile. And then when you're selecting the final candidate, when you do the interviews, you're kind of holding that profile up to that person saying, this was created by the community, the teachers, the staff, support staff. You know, they all had input into what we're looking for. How does that match with the people we're interviewing? But of necessity, we have to post the job first so there's ample time for people to apply. And then we apply the profile to it. Yeah. Yes. So I think that's what Dr. Delaney was getting at, was the, the timing of it. And that, that's fine. I mean, we understand yeah. the urgency. We need to get it out there. And then we, then we can take a look at, with, with those glasses on, um, look at the applicants. Um, but I think that last time, didn't we also include some, we asked, we had some questions that we asked them to write on, didn't we? And like we, you know, to get a feel outside of their resume and the application process, we Oh yeah, yeah. Remember yeah. that? So we'll need to. Um, yeah, that'll come. To, yeah. So that that goes with yeah. the next slide with the application. Absolutely. Um, um, but so this engagement process now happens with the community until um, December second, where we're getting the information to build the profile. Then we'd like to close. We have an online questionnaire. There's a copy of that questionnaire suggested draft copy of the questions that we would suggest you could start with for the, for the focus groups and for, to post on, on the district website. So if people can attend the focus group, they can still submit in writing their ideas about the school district and about the kind of leader they want in the, in the school district. Um, so our suggestion is that on December 9th that we summarize the information that we've got from the focus groups, from the individual interviews, from the community forum, which I was informed that Kate may uh, sponsor, and that we could take that information, summarize it, and present that to the board, and the board then could have a leadership profile that they could use to call, to get the, to get the number of applicants down to decide who you want to uh, pursue, you, what, what's the next step? And the next step to us would be that there would be a special board meeting to review all the applicants, and we'll present to you who we think is qualified, but it was indicated to me by Rick that you may want to, you may want to see all the applicants, which, you know, we don't have a problem with that, but we're going we're gonna to categorize people that we think would be, would be qualified for this job. And then we'd like you to determine who is highly qualified. Who do you want to um, pursue to the next level? And at the next level, what we do is uh, contact these candidates, vet these candidates, um, and go through some, um, we, we ask them to present a, a portfolio, a, a list of things that they've accomplished, and a video of a presentation to the board. But what this allows them to do is to present them their best self to the, the school board, along with their portfolio, the vetting process that we go through. You know, I like to look at that vetting process as kind of a three-way thing. We certainly check out the references, but we also now in this day and age, you gotta check out social media and Google and see what's, what, what's out there as well, and then um, Miles, especially, I think, has over the years developed a, a network of people. I have a network of people that we can use to kind of triangulate the vetting process. So we hear from the references, we get the, the social media, but we also have this third source of information, which is our networks. Those candidates then are presented to you with those videos, and you decide based on that information. Who do you want to interview? The whole process is confidential up to that point. And the reason that's important for the, to ask the board to treat this confidentially and for us to treat this confidentially, you can imagine if Pam was looking for a job in another district, um, that could be hurtful to her, it could be hurtful to the community. If that information gets out 
when it's not even a possibility that, that such a thing could occur. So to protect the, the confidentiality of the candidates, we like to follow this process until we get to the actual interview. By law, anybody that's interviewed by the school board, that's got to be public record. So at that point, it will become public knowledge as to who the board um, actually interviews. Because you can have somebody turn you down, but that when you actually interview someone, that is a public record. Um, so that's the first round of interviews when the semifinalists are selected from that group. Then we have, um, once you have semifinalists, we involve the community again. So this is sort of the, the second stage of community involvement. We would recommend that community members be involved in interviews with the finalist candidates. But we have a process that we, do, we don't want votes on who the committees want, but we want their input for the school board to be able to review. So you would get information from these committees and you would conduct your final interview and at that point would decide which of the finalists you would like to um, advance a contract. At that point, we also ask you besides, and Miles will help you with developing a contract after 24 years of developing contracts with other, for other superintendents and school boards. He understands that. Um, once we have uh, that point, we ask you to get involved in the vetting process yourself. Because we think direct contact with, the, with some of the references of these, um, of the finalists, we think that's critical to your final decision so you're confident that you're selecting the right person. Now, some processes use a site visit. We prefer to avoid that. We think that that's inefficient, and I'm not sure it's any more accurate than, than checking the, the references. So this is the process that we recommend. And then uh, it would be our goal that after that vetting is completed, that on February 24th, the board would be in a position to uh, finalize and sign the contract, as would the candidate. Um, Dr. Mason has asked us to uh, help develop a leadership transition plan. What's going to happen between the time that you select the superintendent and the superintendent assumes duties on July 1st. Next slide, please. So that's the process, basically. And um, that we're recommending to you, but we're flexible um, enough if you want to change um, dates or specific processes. Um, again, we're recommending this to you. We, for some of the details, like when are the focus groups going to happen? What are the questions going to be? Um, rather than deal with that at a board meeting, we'd like to work with a liaison to get the specific planning. We're also going to need um, Megan Larrabee to be um, a part of this search. Um, and it's going to mean work for, for Pam as well. Um, a, to search the process involving the community um, takes some time and it takes some work um, from both the consultants, the board members, the staff. So um, that's that's how we want to how we want to proceed. That's our recommendation to you. If you could approve this tonight, we would move forward. Um, if you need more time to discuss it, um, to consider it, uh, we understand that too. But we'd like to get started tomorrow, if we could, um, with this process so we can meet our timeline. Mm -hmm. And we want to lock in those dates, too. Yeah. We have to back up to the other slides and say which of those specific dates. Yeah, and there's a timeline kind of thing in your packet, too, that um, okay. you these have. Dates, these dates don't, these, this is the, the work that goes on from October 15th to December 2nd is all the focus groups for community questionnaire. Meeting in individual meetings with board members, the meeting with teacher groups, the meeting with all of these people. That's what's going on until December 2nd. If you go to the next slide, then when we get down to, to January 7, 8, or 9, that would have to be a special board meeting. In other words, one most of this cannot happen during a regular board meeting because it's 
going to take too much time. So what we need to know from you tonight, if you improve the process, is which, which date, 7, 8, or 9, for that meeting, which date, 21, 22, or 23, for that meeting. So that's why if you could take a look at your calendars, look at those two meetings, and tell us which one of those dates. Because once you, once you decide on those dates, they're locked in. You can't change those dates. Uh, because we'll be making commitments to, 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 uh, to the work process. Um, we, have to, we have to prepare the videos, working with the people to get the videos done. So which one of those three in January, which one of those three in, in January 21, 22, 23? If you could do that now, that would be tremendously helpful. No. No. And again, if you can't do it tonight, then we'll just have to wait till a time when you can. And I think that might be legal to poll the board on which dates. You can't talk about anything else, but if you wanted to, if you can't sit here tonight, if you didn't have your calendars okay. with you. I have, I have two things. First, I wanted to ask you, I wanted to step back. I've been waiting to go back to the um, what happens between October 15th and, and December 2nd. Um, the focus groups, um, and I am a huge proponent of focus groups, but are you willing and able, um, do you have the capability of doing some online focus grouping? Because a lot of the parents are in my, my in, in the same boat I am. I have young kids. Now I have two teenagers but I also have a seven-year-old. And so when there's so much going on, some of the prime people you want to answer the questions and be at the focus groups will not be able to come because of you know prior family commitments or um, childcare issues. Great, so. great question. We do not want to exclude anybody or have anybody feel that they didn't have a chance to get in. That's why we do have, we send out an engagement letter to the community. And in there, we inform that, that, that there will be questionnaire online it's not the same thing I've but, done market research so I like I get that I totally get that but there's a lot that comes out of a focus group in terms of the the body of you know commentary and the the ideas and everything that come out of that and so I'm I'm asking is there a possibility of an online focus group well that's a great question we, we've never done online okay one of the things that we're unique in is we do mm -hmm. videos and most search firms don't do videos but that's later in the process, I'm just saying. And that's a different audience. Quite honestly, that's something that we have never we, had experience you could, with. If, and we would certainly we'd be, be willing, willing to, to take a look at it and if you'd have the, the format or the technology to. Yeah, there are a lot of like free programs out there that you can do in. Kind know. of a group focus program. We'd love to think. try it. Yeah. yeah. Didn't we do that world. for the referendum? Exactly. Yeah. We did that for what, the what referendum. Is it we, did, we did something similar when we were um, discussing our referendum. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And we did it on. Facebook, Facebook Live? Yeah, um, yeah, and I mean there are other ones. I don't, I don't, I don't know them off the top of that, but I know GoToMeeting or um, FaceTime and like Skype. You know, a lot of them have free accounts that you can, you know, just go on it and then everybody can join in. And you know, the strength in that that sounds that'd be something we can add to, mm -hmm. to what we do. We don't right. know of other search groups that do that, but we'd love to try that. Yeah, because you're going to miss people who really would want to contribute sure. but won't be able to. So, sure. and that should. We Can we talk to you them. about how we could uh, sure. proceed with that? Yes. Yes. Yes, exactly. Megan's okay. a tech guru. We'll, we'll yeah. build that into the process. Yeah. Okay. And then the second thing is, you know, a lot of this that we're talking about tonight, I think we did this a little bit differently last time. We didn't talk about, like, we've had, we had working sessions where we talked through this um, rather than, you know, look at it all. I feel like I'm being asked to, like, okay everything this evening, and I'm not really prepared. Like, I want to look at this and... Like, didn't we meet with the consultant last time? Yep. Um, around, the table. around the table, and we were able to ask all the questions that we, you know, uh, that we had, yep. and, and really get a good feel for that. We can you certainly do that? do that. Yeah, I, I would. Mean, like that's to another do that. meeting. You know. Yeah, I know it is, but this is big, and I. Yeah. I feel Normally, we would uh, in other searches we devote a whole special session to the planning meeting. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, we thought we'd present it. Get your reaction. We're certainly willing to spend a special. We'd be glad to come back. If you're willing to, we would come back for sure. specials. Well, and I think that because Dave is new to this process, yeah. like we were all here the last time, so we know how this went, and yeah. and we know the you know the good and the bad or whatever yeah. you know like the where where we would have liked to have had more. But Dave is brand new to this process, so he doesn't have any background on it, and I think that it would be um, useful to give him a minute too to catch up. Yeah. So. Sure. I, yeah. That would be great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We'd be glad to do that. Do we set up a special schedule that with uh, Rick or, or 
Yeah. It was a working session, wasn't it, last time? Yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't a board meeting. It was so it'll be after session. the board meeting? Or? We still had the post-it and everything. Yeah. yeah, but it was a different It was meeting. a work session. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And when do you schedule your work sessions? Just so. Well, later, in, well, it, and in the evening or right. early After evening. the board meeting? Yeah. Or at well, another no. day? No, It was another a separate. separate. Okay. Yeah. Great. This week would be a good time to do that. The sooner the better. Because then, then that sets all or the Or next week. Next week we could work on Yes. <laughs> Except I won't be here. Oh, okay. For the next, next week? couple weeks. So what do you absolutely need to know tonight? Whether or not, where to post it? The posting, I think, is the critical thing. Posting thrill. and dates. And then to try to work with, uh, is it with Megan to get, start to schedule some of this stuff? Okay. I think there are recommendations around the posting, keeping it to the weekend, and the, I think that'll bring in the uh, the leadership center would bring in the candidates. Yeah, I think so too. I was going to say agree. the same thing. I, we would want to keep it more local. We are special that so way. That makes that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, sure. not national. Do we have consensus on that? Yes. Yes, no? we have agreement yep. in that. Bob, yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. There you go. Now, the other dates, are, are you serious that you need to know the January 21st date now? We need to lock in those dates for the future, yes. The January 21st. I, I, I find, actually, I find that hard to believe. Yeah, I do. <clears throat> we can, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be um, whatever I am, but I think that's, I, I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. Right. Okay, so I think looking yeah, looking ahead yeah i know i'm going to your house but <laughs> but i but i'm i'm a little concerned about trying to set yeah. these dates four months from now um tonight I and i'm, I'm not willing i'm not willing to do that there's How's a work that? session yeah uh, that's been uh, well put forward but maybe we can talk a little bit more at the work session about what exactly you're trying to get at I, with those meetings because I think it's a little like high level right now. We're not really. I mean, I get what you, the words that you have on there, but um, but even the January dates. The, cause person calls. So those are that's paper. That's not a person. That's not a person. So, I mean, we're For that's a January. Video. Yeah. So seven, eight, nine. That's that's paper. So that doesn't involve. A person we're not making a commitment to a person you know you have a window there you know that you need those things in your hands before that window and then um, same thing with same thing with the 21st 22nd 23rd um, that's not a person that's portfolios and videos so so we can talk about it maybe you can explain to us a little bit more at the working session what it is that I think it'd be good if we did that at the working session because in every search of and have done, you set the dates well ahead of time so that everybody's, because we have work between these dates that we have to get accomplished. Right. And it depends on the next meeting. Then that work depends on the next meeting. Right. If we start to push this, which we can, we can broaden this and well, take it I, later and later. And it takes us into March and April. And I don't think we're saying to push it, but you have a range of dates that's three days. So I think we can stick to those three days. We have to, you know, look at our calendars, but I, I don't, I, I hope. Bob's looking at me smiling. No, no. So. <laughs> no, no I, I don't know which one. I don't right. mind the three days. Exactly, right. But I'm not sure of which one. Which one? one. Oh. That's, that's the thing. That's where I am okay. at right and, now. And, and, and I don't know how the candidate could possibly care. Right. And so. the applications well, are due by the 2nd of December. Sorry. That's when all applications have to be in. That that's correct? what we would like. Is that correct? We want to get a little yeah. edge here. So then we've got like yeah. a month. Right. I know it's holidays and it's a busy time for people. But, but yeah. Yeah. But we all know that this is important, so the work, right. we'll get the work done. But so, but yeah. when you but approve the profile people. here, mm -hmm. then we begin using that profile. Now, granted, we've been recruiting and talking to people and out in the field and, and trying to get good candidates. But from that date to this one, we're narrowing the field down and, and doing our due diligence and our right. meeting with them. We meet with every candidate mm -hmm. face to face that we're going to bring to you and say, mm -hmm. "This is highly qualified." Mm -hmm. We have to have time to do that. Right. And that's why between that date and this date, then once we get the highly qualified, mm -hmm. we have to have time to, to let them do the videos. Mm -hmm. And that's why we build in the specific times. I, I think you're exactly right. You know, most of us don't know what's going on for two weeks. But we do need to get a feel for this because if we then move that one, then we have to move the next one and we move the next one and that makes the search later. And we wanted to get this done by the end of February. Well, I think, yeah. You have a head start on it. You, you, 
this is the good news is you're starting way ahead of the field. Yeah, We're going to be the first one. If you want flexibility, you you uh -huh. got it just by so, getting this early start. Right. So so I think I think I think right now our best guesstimate in this room right now is we're okay with those three choices for each one we just don't know which one for those right. dates that's so that's i mean you know just off the top of our heads not looking at our january calendars because i don't have mine with me but um i mean i would guess that those are okay the january 21st Wait, 22nd 23rd is, that is school that board holiday? convention that's school okay. board convention yeah so and when it isn't that that week of two days off too yeah i so that would be a bad week because I have kids and we usually do something during that week. Okay, well, the main thing is we need to get it posted. Yep. And you're okay with that? We're, we're going to eliminate the international. I think the, the final date kind of helps. The, but wait a minute. When do you, wanna, when do you want to hire a superintendent? Because we, we started kind of working back from that date, right. the February date, about this is when you wanted to, to have somebody. So those are the two dates, I think, when we can post, and then when do you want to have this person here, and then we have the flexibility in between those two dates. But, but, but the posting, that's what I was talking about before. Didn't we have a couple of questions? Where's Pam? Didn't we have a couple of questions in the no, posting? No, not, not the posting we didn't, afterwards. Afterwards yeah. we sent them questions yeah. to answer? Yeah. Okay. So but the main, the main thing is we need to get it posted oh, enough. I thought. So people know that we have a vacancy. Uh, I thought everybody filled those questions. Like we had a couple of like an essay or something. Yeah, some like of. a couple of like you know brief paragraph yeah. explain to us blah blah. Like I swear to so because we wanted that from everybody. So it was the same application from everybody. You can't add things afterwards. That's not legal. Like you, everybody has to have the same shot. Oh, I, I yeah. I see. You would you are you, are you thinking you'd like to design a particular kind of application? There were a couple of additional questions that we had to get a better feel for the person rather than just a generic, like you know, yeah, exactly. Something. Yeah, something to, to, to get us to, to get to know the person a little hmm. more than just the and Do you remember? Yeah, what I this? don't, yeah. I don't, know that but it, you can't do it after the fact. It has to go out to everybody who applies. I know this because after, you can't do it after the fact, it goes to everyone who applies. Yeah, so if it's if it goes to everyone, everyone, everyone who, who yes applies to this job, the first, yes, all and candidates. And as long as we send it out to everybody, everyone. yes. So then we're okay. Yes, that can be built. That's not a problem. Okay. If you want to do that, we can we can work with you to get mm -hmm. say two or three questions. Right. They have to write. Uh, right. And that can be built into weekend. Yeah. That's that's what we did. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. Not a problem. It just gave us a little bit more yeah, about the no. person. It gave them a place too to express themselves yeah. in a different way. I like way. it. I think yeah. that's a good idea. That's a good idea. So, can I ask a question? I'm looking. Do you want to have people apply through weekend? Yes. Oh, yeah. Then we can build the questions. Okay. So I'm looking at like the <clears throat> first week in November. That work session. Okay. What are, What do your calendars look like? Sure. I don't sure. have mine. Sure, sure, I can put a. I mean, that's the first idea. What does it look like? So, what is it? What November week of? Fourth? The fourth, fourth is fifth, sixth. Fifth works for me. I'm, well, is it unavailable? Yeah, I'm I can do the work. I have plane tickets already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, yeah, yeah. see my grandkids in Portland. Oh. So ah, I'm going. sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You, my grandkids. Does the fourth work? That's a Monday. The fourth does not work for me, but. It doesn't? No. Fifth? Fifth would work, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. I, don't, I don't have my personal calendar. I'm just looking at a generic calendar. So um, it's, I know it's a Tuesday, but uh, what is that? I'm trying to think of what is going on. <clears throat> well, it's a Tuesday. OK. Um, sure. If there's something, I'll and how find somebody to carry my kids around. You know, how early is, can you get away? Six, four, five? All of the above. <laughs> I could be here as early as four. Rachel? I could. I could. Okay. I could be here as, yeah. I think it's going to depend on. Yeah, I mean, actually, earlier is better for me because is grandma it? grandma would prefer earlier. Like four? Sure. I can do four. Four o'clock on the fifth. I can do it. Okay. 
And we're going to need that time and be to be kind of fresh too. It can't be like later. It might be better, yes, to do that when it's not a board meeting. Yeah. One of the things I, I want to back up just a little bit now that we've got that set that that's the work session that you and Jim will work. On. Um, we can provide some generic questions that could go into the weekend application. But if you had some ideas that you wanted to submit to us, right? We can take those too. Mm -hmm. um, but if we're going to create the posting and get it out there, yeah. it should right. be done before that meeting, I would assume. Right. Yeah, yeah I would think that, that it would be as soon as possible. Right. I was just concerned if it was tomorrow. <laughs> like, I, we, needed, we needed a minute well, to consider something. Jim, you have your email in here, right? Right. In the packet? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. So, right. Well, we can discuss. Can't we, like, can we, can we, can we email? I don't know. Sure. About our questions to each other? Do you like it? Do you not? No, we can't. Can, can we? We can't. No. We can't do board business be it by email. The, the fifth, though, you you get that posted as a, a meeting, okay? But then we lose. No, well, we lose weeks. Yeah. So if but you, we can send them to Jim right. without any problem. Sure. But what if you Remember hate our questions? What? Going to one place, you could, you could email things individually to Jim. Back. Back. Oh, he can give it yeah. back to us so we can go back and forth yeah, with Jim talk them on. individually. Okay, so. Yeah. So, Jim? <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, like discussions with board members. I guess you just can't talk to each other. That right. would be illegal, illegal, but you can talk yeah. to me and I yes. can talk to you. And then you can put you. it back so. out. And then we can say, like, you can, you can have us vote on and then comment why, you know, or something on the questions. Does that make sense? So that we can see each other's responses. We can't do that? Vote. Okay. We can't know. Can't vote. <sighs> if I may. Yes. We're trying to get the posting put together mm -hmm. with those questions in it. Mm -hmm. Do it within the next week to get it out on. Right. To get yeah. you out. One of the first ones. Yeah. It'll be that'll probably be one of the first superintendent openings. Right. To come out I know. Say. You can email Jim suggested questions, each one of you. Okay. Jim and I can go over those questions. We have some other questions that, that we've used in, in interview formats that we could look at. And clear it with the board liaison, the board president, that says, yes, these are the questions. Go ahead and put them in the interview or in the, uh, in the application and then move forward. How many are you thinking about? How many? Like two. Like yeah, two? two or three questions. I don't know. Just something, you know, it's not, you don't want to ask people to do a lot. Yeah. And, but but yeah. the questions have to be poignant enough for us to get a feel for I them think, and their philosophy. I think more than three. And have, now, three. have the questions to you, Jim, by when? Should be this week. Yeah. This week. Mm -hmm. But you can yeah, still you can do that by it. Friday. That would be helpful. By the 18th? Guys, I don't. I just feel like can we meet for like 15 minutes? <laughs> you know what I mean? To just talk about it because you all have good points. You know, we all come to it with something. I feel like we're going to put this out and it's going to be a disaster. Like it's you know we're going to have similar questions but for different reasons or whatever, and it's going to be you know like the communication behind this, like. I, I don't mean to like tire everybody out and like over meeting you, but I just feel well, like I'm gone. I'm gone Wednesday. This week, Wednesday this week, you're gone. Yeah, I'm gone. Wednesday. So, are you available tomorrow? Yes. <laughs> just to meet for a few minutes. Is that can we do that, or do we have to post way ahead? We have to post at 24. So that would be. I, I suppose that would qualify as an emergency. I, I, I don't want to be the only one. So if you all are comfortable doing it the other way, that's fine. But I see the pitfalls that are going to happen here. Well, it, it, and down this road with jobs. Are you available tomorrow, Jim? Yes. So, like four? Four would be sure. Four? Yeah. I, I can make it. You can make it. I can make it four o'clock tomorrow, Jim. We make it. Come back for a work session tomorrow. All we're the details meet here? on this detail. Oh, right not, I don't think we're going through all the details because you're leaving town, right? Are we tomorrow? We're just going to talk about right. questions? Right. Tomorrow, just, just the questions. questions. Just the questions. Just the questions. Yeah. Shouldn't take very long. Questions for the posting. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll bring some to the meeting. We have some questions. That, right. Okay. We have generic questions that go in some of the interview processes mm -hmm. that people could write an essay on. Okay. And we can I, meet I at the really central office? Yes. Okay. So we're up to the central office office tomorrow at four. Mm -hmm. Can we get there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
Everything's open. So I really hope that this discussion doesn't change the wonderful things you said about us earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I mean, this is kind of what we were looking for is the, we'd like to be flexible in this process and we'd like to improve the process. And I think the suggestion to, to include these questions and to do this online uh, focus group are some two improvements that yep. we could Glad incorporate. Okay, so tomorrow at four. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Are you going to come with questions, each of you? Yes, we're going to do that ahead of time. Yeah. That we'll this come, the, we'll the, come with some questions. Yeah, the meeting is just to discuss them and our rationales, then choose the couple that we're going to put forward. Right. So yes, we will be prepared. So then you we can get, get the posting out by the end of the week. Yep. That'd be great. Yeah. Good. So and All you right. said November what is the other one? Five. November fifth. November fifth. At four p.m. See, I was getting fifth the fours at and the fives. 4 p.m. Okay, thank you. Okay. Great. That's it. Good. Thank you. Great. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow at thank four o'clock. All right. Great. Thank you. I just want thanks. Um, I, this is a wonderful opportunity for me to give something back, so appreciate awesome. it. Great. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, and, you all. And I hope that the, the takeaway from this is the passion and the care that we have for our school district and yeah. finding the right person. I we think. Asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> we, want, we want your feelings yeah. and, and what you want, and we'll do it. Okay. Great. Good. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. A motion to uh, go into closed session. Okay. I move that we adjourn to executive session. Pursuant to Wisconsin State Statutes 19.85 Pren 1 Pren E, deliberating or negotiating the purchase of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specific public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session and executive session pursuant to Wisconsin Statutes 19.85 Pren 1 Pren C, considering employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility, specifically middle manager letter of assignment, professional staff contracts. Second. Okay, moved and seconded to approve uh, going into closed session. Can you have a roll call on that, please? Delaney. Aye. Davies. Aye. Stimperio. Aye. Radel. Aye. Mason. Aye. And uh, we're adjourned to closed session. <laughs>